Okay guys, so this is going to be the complete restoration of the 702. This is out of a 1969 uh, Chevy with a manual transmission, most likely direct replacement for the 1969 Corvette Stingray. Move this stuff first and then I'm going to start undoing things and uh, we'll take it one step at a time. Well, these are very loose here, which is quite convenient. Now, these are a little bit different than the ones that I'm usually rebuilding. 704s or 1705s but it should be similar enough this little retainer here is a first for me but uh, I'll try to figure this out Seems that you have to remove this little screw back here so you can actually take this little spring thing. So that is out of there. This of course is the one for the accelerator pump. You need to get a small punch here and drive that pin out. This one actually is pretty easy because this one has a little retainer back here. So that is good. There we go. As you can see, this one has a little clip back here. But that was very easy. This is the bottom part of this spring. As you can see, it's got a little plastic or rubber knob back here. This is hard as a rock, so I'll have to look into that. This thing has to be, has to be taken completely apart, so we're gonna, we're gonna do just that. Let's have a look at this guy here. That was easy. I like it when just stuff comes apart without much of a fight. Well, there's supposed to be a filter, I believe, in there. Yeah, but I guess they took it out. So, thank you. These are the um, idle mixer screws down here. And just for just to see how many turns they had these out, I'm going to count the turns. Half a turn, one, one and a half, barely one and a half. So we're gonna take this guy out of here. These older ones are very, they're easily accessible. These are very nice, wow. Very good condition. Let's check this one, see how far out it was. So half, one, yeah, barely one and a half, so that's good. And again, looks brand new. Maybe someone replaced those. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see about removing the choke. It is a clip. And it just almost fell out of there. It's a little e-clip. Interesting. Gotta make sure that we don't misplace that. 
and this rod comes out of there. That is for the choke. Next, we have this vacuum brake, and of course, we have the fast idle cam. So, this one, yep, this one has a screw right here in the middle. Again, these are very similar to a 704, so that is always good. This one comes out this way and like that. And voila! That's the fast idle cam. This is some pretty rough shape. We may have to see about maybe replacing that. And before I take it all apart, I'm gonna set it aside for now. And then we'll try to figure it out. Then of course we have this stop here for the secondaries. So that one can come out now. Easy enough. That looks good. And what else do, do we have here? It's usually back here, the long screws. Yep. And we have two of these. These are the ones that go hold the uh, air horn in the back. Then we have the shorter ones. We should have a total of nine. So they're all the rest are gonna be like like these and they're gonna be standard flathead uh, screws. It's all the same. Okay, so it'll be two, four, six, eight, nine. Perfect. Seven eight nine good so that is that and just since we're here we might as well we might as well go ahead and remove the secondary metering rods just a tiny little screw back here that holds the hanger in place and again you want to be careful all these little all these little parts and let's fish them out there they are in all their glory they seem to be in very nice shape so we're gonna set those there we have we still have this choke rod here and that came came off so that is that. So for now, let's just see about removing the air horn. And there it is. And these tubes are all, wow, they're pretty, pretty dirty. That one is not too bad. This one is pretty dirty. But these are gonna come off and then we'll clean them properly. You have the secondary discharge nozzles. They look just fine. But uh, yeah, this thing so far looks pretty darn good. Then we have the accelerator pump. Oh, this thing is hard as a rock. So yeah, this, this whole thing ideally needs to be replaced they're not expensive and uh, if you order from the right place you can get them as part of a kit I'm gonna I always like to save these gaskets just in case 
This one is pretty, pretty stiff, but oh well. No big deal. There we go. Yeah, this thing has seen better days. There's nothing surprising there. Man, these 702s, they had a huge float in there. Wow, that is a tight fit, actually. And of course, we have this plastic retainer. Very nice shape, so that is awesome. And we're going to take the... This was loose. Probably worn out. This is the uh, power piston, as you can see, with the primary metering rods. Very nice. This little retainer here has to be replaced. The thing will just break into several small pieces once I'm ready to uh, replace it. No big deal. Uh, power piston spring which may need to be replaced also so that is that let's take out the the float and the needle let's look at the needle here first it's got its little hanger, so all of that is good. Yeah, this thing is pretty, pretty much spent. But anyway, and this is the float. I'm gonna go ahead and test it before we reinstall it, make the necessary adjustments, of course. And then you have this little fulcrum uh, clip we have jets down here. I'm very happy this thing is coming apart beautifully. Always good. And it's actually, I mean, there's dirt in here, but it's actually in pretty nice shape. It's just old. Let's take a look at the, at the jets and um, see what they, what they tell us. Here we have one. Do we see any numbers on it? Let's see if we can look at the numbers here. It does look like a 67, doesn't it? Let's look at the other one, see if it's, if it's the same thing. I have to do a little research. This one had numbers at, at some point. They are gone. I think there's a seven. Yeah, I think it might be a 67. I don't know. We'll do a little more, more research, but uh, that is not a big deal. I'll take this little check ball. That's the uh, spring for the accelerator pump. Okay, and the check ball is in there, so let's Turn this thing upside down for a sec so we can get it out of there. Oh, and here's also the, um, the little lever I was mentioning about the, um, the choke lever. So that is that. Perfect. And here we have a little check, check ball, whatever it's called. So those are out of there. And let me get a big screwdriver and we're gonna break free this. Psst. Oh, there we go. The needle seat. Those things get kind of stuck in there a little bit. Oh, and this came up with the washer and all. Let's take a quick look in there. So far, that's the inside of a 702. And again, just some dirt buildup, nothing, nothing really serious. I think it'll clean up pretty, pretty, pretty well. Gotta clean all these little 
tubes here, here, on this side as well. We'll take care of all of that in short order. And as you can see here, we have back here we have this baffle. That one, those usually just slide out of there. Perfect. I don't know what the purpose of this little kind of like a diverter thing is because this is where the nozzle would be pointed to. This side doesn't have anything like that. Interesting. Okie dokie. And the big jets look good from here. Next, what I'm going to do is turn it upside down and remove the, uh, the base plate. And yes, this one has it's the older style, so it has three Phillips head screws that secure the base plate to the body. Wow, these were barely on there. <laughs> Look at this, these are just falling out of there. I'm not complaining. We're gonna tighten them a little better when we uh, put this thing back together. But uh, this is good. It's good stuff. Alrighty. So that is the base plate. Let's have a look at separating this guy from the body. There we are. And these are the original ones, obviously. These are staked, so I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I think that's enough play in there to warrant um, bushings. So we're going to do that. Let's see this. Oh, this gasket looks new for all intents and purposes. Wow. It doesn't mean that I'm going to reuse it, of course, but I think maybe someone rebuilt the thing at some point. And uh, look at that. It's like brand new. Wow. Cool beans. And here we go. Well plugs. What I'm going to do is just use a little bit of tank weld. I think that's going to be the best thing to do. I don't want to be driving those out because they may, may not leak. So these here, I may go with mechanical plugs or again, I can probably, they look, this one especially looks very nice. I may just put a little bit of tank weld here, 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 and where else? Even this plug here looks beautiful. I may put a little bit on top of that, and of course here at the very tip, and here on the side just in case, just a very light uh, amount of tank weld. Just a little insurance, you know what I mean? This is very nice. Beautiful. Alrighty. Boy, I'm gonna have to edit this video. I mean, so far we got 26, 26, 26 minutes into the video. But of course, I wanted to get as much detail as possible. Let me bring you in. We have all the innards laid out. I mean, I know where they go, so. <laughs> No worries there. We have the uh, gaskets. One of them may be reusable, so that is good. All of these parts are going to get a good bath. And before I go, I'm going to remove the, uh, the the primary throttle shaft so I can install new bushings just because. It's always a good idea to do that. And of course, we want to take everything apart so we can clean it to perfection so it looks beautiful. 
All right, guys, let me get busy with this one and I'll be back in a sec. So for this guy here, first we're gonna remove this spring, this part of it. This is very easy to do, usually. There we go. That is loose now, so next we're gonna These can be really stuck in there, but got it. And as you can see, this is how the little spring fits. Then it attaches to the to the levers and this little stop here. So it's pretty simple. These pieces here may be a little bit stuck in there, but we're gonna try to talk him out of there. You don't wanna go bananas applying too much pressure, just gentle amount of pressure. So we have this little lever, which is for the fast idle. So you can see here we have the screw and, and all of that. And uh, what I do is I, uh, I count out the other uh, turns. It's usually about three, three and a half turns. That's a pretty, pretty accurate um, number of turns for that um, uh, fast idle um, adjustment. Then we have this one. This one has a little bit of a jog here that goes toward the inside. I don't know if you can know if you can see that see the little jog here and of course probably won't fit any other another any other position this one as you can see also has a little little piece that goes against this part of the body which acts like a stop and that one just slides out Now, of course, before this thing will come out of there, I have to get the Dremel and grind those four little screws down because they're staked and that's the only way to get them out. Let's try the needle nose pliers and carefully. There we go. So that then allows me, so after that I can, while holding secondary um, blades close, I can rotate this so I can gain access to the, to the little cutout here and remove the, the spring as you can see. That is that, and then this one of course now it's no longer un under tension so this little spring will just release and at the same time you can remove this portion along with the with the rod that goes to the throttle um, from the primary uh, primary shaft so th here you see that I'm gonna keep it together for now Eventually everything is going to be taken apart so it can be cleaned properly and here you can see the The smaller spring these things are just dirty, but these are in beautiful condition So no worries there. Just give them a good bath and Lube them a little bit and that'll go right back in there Good deal And again, I'm not going to be removing this shaft There's hardly there's no play there. Let's have a look at our carburetor body here. I need some paper towels and that sort of thing. This has been soaking for a good, oh, I don't know, 12 hours, 10 hours or so. Yeah, probably like 10 hours. And sometimes well, that's all it really really needs yeah a 
it'll clean up nicely. I'm gonna set this for now here and next I believe I'm gonna do the, the air horn but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little tubes before I do that and that is a pretty simple operation we'll try the needle nose pliers first see if they if they do the trick if not I'm gonna have to use the there we go no damage we're gonna clean those separately of course there we go very nice Come on now, there's always one guy who wants to be difficult. Let's get this one to try this tool. I'm not asking anymore. Good night. And I'm gonna run a tiny little drill bit order those a while back and I'm gonna do that for all the little vent and uh, fuel pickup tubes and uh, these are not you can leave those alone you don't have to remove those so this one needs a bath now In it goes. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it, right? And by the way, if uh, if you really want to make it look. Um, better than you. You can even take a file and carefully address these rough areas a little bit carefully. And uh, again, that is only if you're super picky. Something that I am not. Okay, yes, I am. So I may have to do that now. That I talked about it otherwise it'll bother me see castings sometimes they're pretty rough and you can carefully take just a flat file and dress up these areas just a little bit and then when you really clean it and even polish it a little bit if you want to do if you want to go to that extent then all of these little little scratches will go away see Again, if you're a, a detail-oriented person and this is the kind of stuff that, uh, that you like to do, go for it. It's the little details that count and sometimes they make the biggest difference. You didn't know that I was going to get all philosophical this morning, right? Neither did I.
wanted that to happen, but it did. So this thing has been fighting me a couple of times. First, when I was taking it apart, the original screw broke off. I managed to get it out of there and, and save the, uh, the threads. And now, as so I was starting to test fit things to put it back together, this one broke off. These little vacuum brakes, as they're called, can be problematic. As you can see, they're like caught in between these two prongs here from the bracket. Sometimes you have to bend them a little bit. This one, I think, I see, yeah, there's movement here. <coughs> so, there we go. That wasn't too bad. And these items, of course, can be replaced. So you can find them from most Quarterjet uh, parts vendors. And uh, even though you, you hear a little bit of vacuum in there, it just doesn't hold the vacuum. That is the problem. This thing is, is really shot, so. But anyway, uh, you're gonna need a um, bench vise to separate this thing. And again, these prongs, sometimes people, for whatever reason, bend them inward. So this really stays in place. It's not necessary, really, if there's a snug fit, like in this case. And uh, that's all there is to it. So this is a very basic test. And what I did is I just poured some alcohol into the carburetor bowl to see if there's any leaks from the uh, well plugs. And it's been in there and I think it's gone down a little bit. So it's been sitting in, you know, in the bowl for about three minutes. Put a fresh paper towel under it and we'll see if there's any signs of a leak. So I'll be careful lifting this. Yep, there's the answer. It is leaking. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to find a dry spot, set it carefully there again, and give it another three minutes. It's probably going to leave another spot there. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Let's try this unscientific experiment again. Let's see if we have another spot under the, the wells. Yes. So it's definitely leaking, and um, I gotta address that. Okay, I know this is pretty boring, but this has got to be done. And as careful as I try to be, there's always a little bit of excess. And the reason you want to, you don't want to build it up too much is because those wells are going to sit. Those wells are going to be sitting in this area. I'm going to use one of those. Uh, super gaskets as they're called. It's basically a, a little piece of foam that is pre-cut to this shape and the wells are going to just sit on top of that again helping hopefully to prevent um, fuel from going into the intake manifold. So here's a close-up and again I'm gonna have to let that cure for several hours most likely until tomorrow. There's no rush. For the primary wells, I use tank tank weld, and um, again, I made a very small plug because one once more they have to clear these areas here. I also use the tank weld to 
take care of that one just in case. There's a tiny little plug there. I also add a tank weld and right here at the very front. So it should be pretty sealed. So by tomorrow I'm going to be able to test with alcohol in the bowl again and see what um, what the results are and hopefully there would be no interference from the added um, epoxy okay so I have a clean paper towel this has been curing for uh, roughly about 10 hours and what I'm going to do again is use some alcohol, put some alcohol in the bowl here and see if we have any, any leaks. Well, I totally forgot about this thing, so it's been over an hour. So there's still alcohol in there, which is a good sign. So let's see what happens. and it is dry so that is excellent no more leaks Time to polish the air horn. There's a lot of corrosion here on this um, aluminum, so there's only so much that I can do with these little cheapo tools, but uh, it's better. It's getting, you know, cleaned up quite a bit so but unfortunately unless you really have the time and the right tools and then do a little plating it's never gonna look like brand new again it's gonna look cleaner but oh well only so much you can do just a quick update I didn't film everything because I've done this stuff before and it's pretty much the same thing for the 702 as it is for the 704 so I didn't want to repeat myself so much I reinstalled the little brass tubes here and uh, they seem to be really in there now um, I detailed things a little a little more and like I, I think I, I said earlier there's only so much you can do I am test fitting a few other components. Nothing, nothing much really, but uh, oh, and I put together the throttle base plate. I noticed that the, whoever rebuilt or worked on this car before, they had this little spring installed wrong, but I fixed that. Everything seems to be working. Uh, as it's supposed to and uh, get this also all buttoned up and as you can probably tell I hope you can anyway it's uh, it's looking a lot cleaner I am picking up the rebuild kit tomorrow so I'm gonna put this back together should be done in a, in a day or so and I still have a few little parts that are gonna have to um, to be assemb assembled a little later when I'm this is all loose here. Um, I'm just again test fitting a few uh, components and, uh, and that sort of thing. See, this thing is it's okay, I guess, but it's, uh, it's pretty brittle. So, we have to somehow get it out of here. Just cut this thing off of here we're not going to be reusing it anyway there 
and this is the new one a lot more supple so that is good and we have to get this little knob over the over this little spring-like piece and I think that does it so that I'm glad that the um, folks over at Quadrajet Power they include everything because that is very important yeah this thing is, is the original one is just really hard and um, it's not supposed to be like that. Okay, I'm trying not to block too much. So this one fits back here. Then you have this other piece. Okay, so the top metal portion, again, it's like spring-like. I'm gonna install with this L shape up because the uh, that small rod will go over that in a sec from the accelerator pump it connects here. See, loud truck. So let's see if we can do this without blocking the camera too much. So that goes like so. You don't need to over tighten it or anything. Good. When you are rebuilding the power piston, you want to remove the old retainer and install a new one. These come with a. They come with a little cut or they're sliced as you can see there hope you can and that allows you to place them over the shaft and then they just kind of right there and when you install it into the body then you'll have It'll hold everything in place and we'll cover that part later.
this is going to be pretty hard to show, but I'll give it a try. Sometimes the choke rod gets gets disconnected. And I'm going to try to show you this bottom portion, which is really short compared to this one. Has to connect with that little lever in there. And to do that, you have to slide in there. And what happens sometimes it gets disconnected, but I wanted to show you that because that's how that thing is held in there. Once you connect the top to the actual choke lever, it'll, it'll stay in place. But that's where that thing goes. So I hope that helps you understand how this thing works. And as you can see, this is how it's controlled by the choke mechanism. And of course, there's a small shaft that goes all the way across in here that holds that lever in place. I am gonna adjust the float, but it's very important to do it properly. So I recommend getting something like a Haynes book. And if you look in here under 69, Rochester four, four barrel MV, and that's a divorce joke, which this one is. Let's see. Says here float level. This is a 350 horse engine. Three sixteenths of an inch. It's very important to uh, to use the right adjustments when uh, when it comes to the carburetor. Again, these books have been around for a while and they're great. By the way, installing this little clip for the needle is totally optional. I can always use them, but uh, it'll work just fine without it. And installing them, it's a little bit of a pain, but all they do is just clip onto the, the needle. And once, once they're clipped in, they're gonna stay in place. That's all there is to that. And when it comes to the float, I've mentioned this plenty of times, you just wanna hook it like that. Do not use those holes. If you do it that way, may appear to be correct, but it is not. So this is what the float with the needle and the clip is gonna look like once it's pro properly installed. And you wanna adjust, of course, the, uh, the level. I like to make my own little gauge. This one was 3 16 so I measure that and make my own um, tool for setting the, the height of the uh, level of the float, I mean. So this is back together. I push the roll pin out of there, so it's all set. And this is how this thing operates. I don't understand exactly how this thing works, but there's like some kind of a vent. And whenever you're giving it gas and the accelerator pump is all the way down, it closes that uh, rubber seal there. And then it opens and I think it's a vent. But uh, so all I have to do is install the up here, just one of these clips. I think one of these. And 
that would be done. So that's next. It's looking pretty good. Oh, before I forget, I also have this little cover here that fits right there with uh, one of the long screws here. Well, not the really long ones, but uh, the regular screws, I should say, for the air horn. That's how that thing sits in there. Seems to be working fine.